Q. Ever, deep thinker in quantum mechanics. He developed this parallel uh, universe uh, ID interpretation of quantum mechanics that no one understands. Yet some people think there is some truth in here, but it's it's really hard to see. Uh, it's it's an elusive truth. All right. PBS was uh, going to do a show on his life. A co-worker of mine uh, told me about it, you know, physics heads up sort of thing, and, and I planned to ignore it. <laughs> Why? Because I never understood this whole parallel branching universes thing uh, in my life, you know, all the stuff I read about it. Never, never clicked, right? But the, the missus, the wife, she pointed it out. And, uh, oh, well, she knows I go on and on about uh, this physics stuff. But we don't share that much. But since she brought it up, I said, oh, sure, I'll, I'll, let's share uh, the, this, uh, this experience, right? And Hugh Everett is just, you know, your classic supernova uh, intellectual. He's appreciated uh, by his peers. Uh, no one sees any flaws in what he's done. And uh, no one gets it. <laughs> Just no, no one gets it. Then, oh, you can kind of work some things out, but they didn't get it enough that you know he just basically gave up on physics, went to work at uh, and the Department of Defense. His beautiful idea just ignored. Except late in his life, like uh, I don't know, eighty-seven or something like that. They had a, a, um, a symposium devoted to it, and it was like this uh, welcome to a long lost hero. Uh, he was just just on his game. He knew the the guy, the subject dead cold, and could still impress people uh, with how useful he it was in his hands. He's a touchingly awkward math uh, physics nerd. His idea was just just really big. But it can't be explained to, to, to anyone. Okay, it's, an, it's it certainly didn't work in the um, in the in the Nova show itself, and we accept that that somehow it's it's this bit of math magic, right? And so I was kind of thinking about that, you know. Uh, he's talking about parallel worlds, you know, and I'm thinking, uh, well, hold it, let's, let's, let's be more parallel, you know, kind of thing. No, 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 come on, let's be more parallel and, and branching and stuff like that. And, and something actually clicked in my head about the way I think about uh, quantum mechanics. I don't discuss that, by the way, in this thread, okay, because it's not core to the unified field theory. What's core to that? is max and um, variations, uh, sophisticated variations on max. And I, uh, I started to see a way that I might be able to explain it and maybe even explain it to the wife, okay? <laughs> so I'm, I'm doing this in the car, okay? So we don't have the graphics, okay, that I'm gonna put here. But you know the sine function. And she knew the sine function. It's a thing with all the bumps, okay? And um, you think you understand it? Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> because now what we're going to do is we're going to animate it. Remember my focus on space-time, okay? So if we have that pencil and we just sweep it along here, what are we going to see on the pencil? We're going to see a dot go up and down and up and down forever, okay? That is classical physics. Fine. I mean, what, what, I'm supposed to be surprised? I'm supposed to be impressed? No, no, hold on a second. I can hold that pencil any way I want to. What happens if I hold a pencil of animation horizontally? Now I see nothing until I get to the bottom, and then I can see like an infinite collection of points, okay, that fly apart from each other and then come back together, and then they go into nothing. So... There's the parallelism. It's seeing all these things do the same thing at the same time. That's parallelism. But there's another deep aspect of quantum field theory. 
And that, that deep aspect is you must think about many particles. If you think about one particle, I remember Mitch Golden at, at Harvard University, when he was at Harvard University before he went to uh, 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 an internet startup that I think flopped. He was the one who said to me that relativistic quantum mechanics is about many particles. Well, in this way, it's about many sine functions, one piled on top of the other, piled on top of the other. Now you go with your pencil and you'll see all these parallels keep on showing up and disappearing and showing up and disappearing. And so this is not quite Hugh uh, Everett's idea in that he thought of the world's branching uh, more, more like we live when we're looking at a system that's under the rules of quantum mechanics, we're looking at, at all these uh, functions, same functions piled one on top of the other, and if you're in one place or in the other place, you're going to get a similar story. Now, it's not going to be the exact story because, you know, it's slightly different. But this visualization gives me a handle now on what's going on in, uh, uh, in his parallel uh, um, world view.